Hello, welcome back to Trail Freak Garage. <laughs> well, actually it's just Trail Freak. Uh, but I'm in Trail Freak Garage and I'm sorry you had to wait so long for part two of my carbon repair. So, see, I lost a bunch of footage from the last time. Uh, all the, there's a, I got a little bit of footage with, which I will put up right now. So watch that. Now this piece will be about right. Yeah, you don't want to try to whip a whole bunch of bubbles in this. The less bubbles, the better. On first, then I laid my first layer, then my second layer, and now I'm on my third. And I'm using and that's all I got. Got just a little bit of mixing and got a little bit of putting layers on. After I did all that. You know, most of the footage I lost was of me, you know, doing more layers. And I had a problem with one of the layers. It didn't sit up right. I had to scrape all that mess off because it wouldn't sit up for nothing. The very first layer that I put on set up awesome. I got it sanded down and it's going to do another layer, another layer. So I, I actually put two layers on that did awesome. So, you know, I got that done. The second layer well actually be the third fourth layer I'm confusing myself but anyway the next time I did it it wouldn't cure it wouldn't harden up or anything so I had to scrape all that mess off and I had a race that weekend it was the Jared race I just scraped all that stuff off cleaned it up and it was holding so I just throw some duct tape on it I raced it it held up good there's a couple pictures if you want to see that of me racing and a picture of what it looked like I just had some duct tape on there saying all fixed you know, after that race, I was going to come back and finish it up, but I, you know, got busy with other stuff and wasn't able to do it. So I rode it like that for a couple more races, and it, it's held up fine. But I do want to get another layer on here. You know, just get it on here, get my, my carbon fiber bash guard up made, put it on here, and just not worry about it anymore. So I'm going to do two more layers and get it sanded down and put a clear coat on it and uh, we'll be done. I'm not gonna paint it or anything, I'm just gonna leave it like that. It's gonna be just raw carbon, you can see it. And uh, yeah, so let's get to it. I'm gonna mix up the resin, get the, uh, put a layer of resin on there and put the carbon pipe on there. Then I'll let it cure for probably about three or four days before I start sanding on it and I will sand on it get it smooth and I might put another layer of epoxy on it to make it real smooth then go back and wet sand it then put a clear coat on it to protect it from the UV rays so uh, let's get started and see if I won't mess this one up too again <laughs> I don't want to do that again scraping that mess off was a pain it was, man it was so messy got it everywhere anyway let's get started all right so I got my my resin my two layers I'm going to use got those cut out in the shape that I need. Uh, got my scale. I didn't use a scale previously because I was just doing equal parts. I think that's part of the reason why my uh, last layer messed up and didn't harden. Either that or the epoxy I was using was bad because it was it was a cheap epoxy. Uh, the first. The first couple coats I used epoxy was the it came with the carbon fiber and it was some good stuff and I had some other epoxy laying around that I used anyway it didn't work out so I'm hoping this epoxy works out and I'm gonna try to get a little bit more precise with this uh, scale here so equal parts then it's gonna take about five minutes to mix this stuff to get it all mixed nice and cozy so let's do that. 
I'm just I'm just guessing about how much resin I'm going to use, but I'm, I'm sure there's science to it. And I think there is. I think if you if I measured the area of my cloth and uh, do some crazy math, you'll come up with how much resin you need to use. I'm not doing that. Math is not fun. Okay, get this thing going. All right. All right, equal parts. Now to mix for five minutes. So I won't bore you with mixing. So come back later. All right, my epoxy is mixed up, ready to go. Just gonna start by uh, brushing some on right here. Get that good and covered. That should be good enough. Now I'm going to get my first little layer of carbon, lay it on there. brush more epoxy on top of that you know taking stipple supposed to stipple what they call that uh, to get the resin good and soaked into the carbon there I know I've had trouble with this little radius right here I couldn't could hardly get the you know, carbons a little bit stiff they don't want to lay down very well Getting it. It's gonna stick up a little bit on the edges, but I'm gonna be okay. Gonna be sanding on it anyway. Just make sure it's got some nice layer of epoxy on there. Like I, pro I said in my other video, I don't care if it's perfect or not. I mean, as long as it holds, I don't care what it looks like. As long as it holds up for another year or so. Like, bikes are expensive, man. Especially now. Even getting them fixed professionally is expensive, so that's why I'm doing this. Well, it's been fun. Learning experience. I don't think I'll do it again. I feel like that little radius right there. I don't like that at all, but it'll work. It'll work. It's going to. I mean, Right there, my bash guard, frame guard is gonna hold the fort down right there, so I ain't worried about that. All right, now let's go grab my other piece because that looks pretty good. Work some of the epoxy in there again. Get it stipled down. Like a little overhang right there I ain't worried about. Just making sure we get that on there. Little strands. Pull those out. Just keep working that epoxy in there. See, that's what you can see right there is coming off right there. It's hard to get that to lay down on that radius there. Try to get it in place. Okay, that's on there. I'm gonna keep 
stapling this bottom right here to try to get it to stay up. But other than that, I'm gonna leave this alone and let it cure and come back and sand on a little bit. Then we'll go from there. All right, I believe it's ready to sand. It's been a few days. I did a little test sanding right there. So hopefully it's cured enough. All right, I got her sanded down. I'm gonna do one more coat of epoxy on here and that should be it. And after I do the epoxy, I'll probably wet sand it with some finer sandpaper than do a clear coat. The clear coat will help protect from the UV light. But it's not going to be a whole lot showing here because my, my bash guard I made goes up through here, I think, somewhere in there. But just clear it. I'm going to leave it like that, make it a kind of a rat rod style bike now. <laughs> it's, it ain't going to be pretty. Yeah, it's an enduro bike and that's what i use it for i ride enduros with it i don't care if it gets nicked up on um, the paint you know i like nice paint but this paint's faded it's got rock things anyway anyway just saying it's not going to be repainted it's going to be raw carbon protected with a clear so let's get some epoxy mixed up and brushed on Try to get some even strokes on there to, so it won't show much brush, brush strokes. I mean, I'm gonna sand it, wet sand it down anyway and clear it, so it don't matter too much about the brush strokes. But wanna try to get get it real smooth, let it cure. Uh, I think that's enough epoxy on there. Let that cure. Like I said, I'm gonna sand it and all that good stuff. So we'll see about that. All right, just finished putting on the last coat of epoxy. I'm going to say this is, it hasn't been fun. I mean, it's been kind of fun, but not really. <laughs> it was cheaper than sending it off to somebody to get fixed. It was cheaper than buying a new bike. It was cheaper than getting a frame replaced. That would have been the best route to go, though, if you had the money. I didn't have very much money, and I needed my bike to go. And also, the spot that this was in, it wasn't that bad of a spot. If it would have been around the bottom bracket or around a suspension pivot or anything, I probably wouldn't have been able to do anything with it. I would have had to definitely got a new frame or maybe it could have been professionally fixed in these areas. I'm not sure, but if it wasn't, this was a good area to, for me to do it because it was in a, there's not a whole lot of stress right here. I mean, the whole bottom tube gets stressed, but it's not as much as like say an actual pivot point. Because I'm sorry for taking so long to get this finished. I'm still not finished. I still got to get it sanded, clear coated, and put back together. But this, I'm going to end the video here. And the next time you see this bike will probably be my next enduro. I believe it's going to be Sugar Mountain. Really put it to the test again. Like I say, I rode it before with just that one layer. Had no problems with it. And I just wanted to do another good layer for, you know, good reason. Just... I just want an extra layer for uh, more strength. Anyway, like I say, I'm sorry for taking so long to get this out. Like and subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos in the future. Hopefully, <laughs> you know how slow I am about these videos. But anyway, thanks for watching. Leave your comments down below on how crappy the job this is and how you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't be riding that bike. So thanks for watching again. Just ride, man. It's not pretty, but it's cheaper than getting it professionally fixed or getting a new frame. So less than a hundred bucks, it's fixed. Like I say, it's not pretty, but it'll hold.